All right, guys, let's talk about alpha cleavage in aldehydes this time. I've already done a lesson about alpha cleavage in ketones. This is basically the same as a ketone, except I have an H. Now again, electron impact mass spectrometry will remove an electron from the molecule, leaving me with a ion that has the same mass as the molecule, but with a positive charge. That'll give me my molecular ion peak. Now, what can happen from here? The definition of alpha cleavage is when one of these bonds breaks, leaving you with a, positive a positively charged ion and a radical. Alpha cleavage of this bond here would result in one electron going to the double bond of the O, that electron moving to pair up with it, and the other electron going to the H. So again, alpha cleavage here will result in a triple bond to the O and a positive charge on that fragment plus an H atom with a single electron around it. This is an unfavorable reaction. Even though this is resonance stabilized, H radical is horrendously unstable. That makes this particular pathway not very likely at all. It will happen a tiny bit, but it should not be expected. Let's try alpha cleavage on the other side. Let's have this bond break. One electron goes into the bond. That electron moves to pair up with it. And one electron goes to R. R is more likely to exist as a radical. It's an alkyl radical, I should say. What I'm left with is my O and my H. Again, my O has my slight positive charge formally. So my mass spectrometer would detect this peak plus my R1 radical, much more stable than an H radical. Unfortunately, this is not very stable. There is a small amount, quote unquote, of resonance stabilization here. But this particular carbon is not going to be able to, to uh, stabilize that positive charge quite as well as it would if this H was an alkyl group. What you'll remember about alpha cleavage of ketones is that the reason these fragments are stable and the reason alpha cleavage happens is because this resonance stabilization occurs. This particular uh, carbocation, I guess we could call it, is a little more stable because R1 can remove some or can donate some electron density and help stabilize it. H is not good at donating electron density. That makes this a little more unstable than you would expect, which means this resonance stabilization doesn't occur quite as much as you would probably expect. And this alpha cleavage is also not likely. Again, it will occur a tiny bit, but alpha cleavage for aldehydes is generally just not a factor. I prefer to say it's not significant, just like, uh, never mind, I'm not going to get into my relationships. Oh, long story short, with aldehydes, do not expect alpha cleavage because H radicals are not stable and CHO plus ions are also not stable. It's the way it is. Drop the mic and best of luck to you.